All right, here we go. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the C Squared podcast from a rooftop in Bucharest. We haven't done one of this live over the board, online, offline. How would you want to call this podcast? Online, offline. Um, yeah, we haven't done a We've live done. one since. How long has it been? It's been a long time. Yeah. Because there was the candidates, and after that we didn't do it. Well, we didn't meet after the candidates until now. Perhaps March? Was that the last one we've done face-to-face? -face? March? What was in March? I'm trying to remember. I think it was the American Cup. We've done one during the American Cup. Oh, yeah, maybe during the American Cup. But even Cup. that might have been online. Yeah, I don't remember. Uh, American Cup. Yeah, it was, it was a bit of a blur because there was a whole candidate's preparation beforehand. So that took quite a lot of um, time. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's been a while. Bucharest. We're in Bucharest. You just got here last night. It's extremely warm. It's about 90, 93 yesterday. I filmed the show opens in a full suit. In 93 degrees weather, after five minutes, I was completely soaked. Yep. Um, it's pretty hot. Hopefully you guys will not see that, spot that on camera. But yeah, it's pretty painful. Anyway, we have a bunch of stuff happening in the chess world. A bunch of stuff has just happened in the past week as well since we last caught up. I believe the big news of the day was Jaspen versus Kramnik. We've discussed that. Yeah, I don't know, like what, has anything actually happened besides people talking? Nothing no. has actually happened, right? There, there have been no major events uh, or, or minor events even. Well, there, there has been the US no, oh, no, the, the, the Karen's Cup. The Karen's Cup happened. Karen's Cup, okay. but that, also Uzbek Cup. Is that how it was called? But that was over when we filmed our last one. Was it? No, I that don't was think finished, so. Wasn't I don't it? think so. No, no, no. Just recently it finished. Eric Aisi won by... No, no, no. no. So the Uz, Uz Cup, the Uz Chess Cup or whatever it's called, was won by Yakubov, uh, Norbeck Yakubov. Okay, I'm confusing the, the Stepan Avagyan, Avagyan Memorial was won by... Um, Eric Aisi. By Arjun, yeah. Like very... Convincing. Very cleanly, yeah. Yeah. So he won, and then the and the Uzbek tournament was like tied between two Noderbeks. Like last year, they had like the same same thing, yeah, where they both played some open event. I forget which one, and they and they tied for first, and and Yakubov won, and no, um, Abdustarov got second. Yeah. And it was the same thing here. Yeah. Anyway, very convincing uh, victory in that one by Erigaisi. You uh, um, picked him as the top contender coming from India right now. You are getting the laurels because he's number four in the world, but it always changes. Yeah, I mean, they're all very strong. So it's not, um, yeah, it's hard. They're, they're all very strong. That's kind of what we could have expected as well, right? They're, they're all super strong. I think this is a point of discussion in the last week. Uh, the fact that he's made it all the way to the top 10, top five, right? In open tournaments for the most part. Um, and people were wondering, why is he not getting invitations? I think he's just about to be receiving quite a lot of invitations. First of all, he did play the Grand Chess Tour, the first rabbit, as a wildcard. Yeah. He's not a full-time participant, but still, as a wildcard, he received an invitation there. I think we're going to see much more of Eric Aisi in closed events. Yeah, for sure. But also, I, I don't really think that he doesn't get invitations. I mean, the tournament in Armenia was an invitational, mm -hmm. closed round robin. Okay, it wasn't like 2750 average, but it was still like 2670, 2680 average. Uh, he played another closed tournament. Like, I was looking at his tournaments this year, which qualify for the Grand PDA circuit, and half of them were uh, closed invitationals. Yes. And half were open events. So, the, the reason why he didn't get invited, for example, to the Grand Chess Tour, which is what people are mostly talking about on Norway Chess, is because his rating at the start of the year, when, or yeah, at the start of the year when the invitations were being handed out, was lower than Pragnanta, was lower than Noderbeck, Abdusatara, uh, and was lower than Gukesh. That that's it. That's the only reason. It's not like some some big thing. Now that he's twenty-seven to seventy, uh, all the invitations going forward he will be one of the main guys to get them. I mean, the organizers only really go by average rating uh, of the tournament. They're just looking for the highest average rating. It changed a little bit. It used to be that way in the Grand Chess Tour. Now I think there is a fair play uh, criteria as well. 
know what that means. <laughs> well, you don't see some names in, in the GCT anymore that might have made it in previous years based on rating. But yeah, there is a fair play measure as well. Um, I, I still have no idea what that means. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, for example, there's been players in the past that have been invited because they had a rating, mm -hmm. but they shouldn't have been invited. And for that reason, the organizers have changed the criteria of picking up players. Like, for example, if somebody's not active, they're just okay. sitting on the radio. Okay, sure. Even if they're sitting for a little bit. Or if somebody just comes in and makes nine draws in like 20 minutes or like an hour. Okay. That's a fair play measure. Okay. Um, so uh, I think yeah. they're trying to adjust. Yeah, inactivity, of course, is, is a bit of an issue. 